So in this task, you were supposed to uh, make as if you're carrying out different experiments. So this would be the first experiment, second experiment, and third experiment independently. In the first experiment, you're going to be changing the light intensity. So that's the first limiting factor being investigated. So you're changing light intensity. How will you change light intensity in the different experiments? So... You're going to be using a lamp that is placed at different distances from the plant. So, for example, if you have your plant, let's say you have the Lydia plant which is in water and so you have the lamp, okay? So you can use a ruler and then you can measure. So you have the ruler here, so then you can measure the distance of the lamp from the plant. So at one time you'll have the lamp here, then you could have the lamp here in the second experiment, and you could have the lamp far away in the third experiment. So this is how you can change uh, the light intensity. So as it goes furthest, this is low intensity, and as it is very near, this is high intensity. Okay, and how will you measure the rate of photosynthesis? So you're just going to count the bubbles. More bubbles you have, more photosynthesis you have. Or you could also measure the volume of oxygen produced. So then you're going to uh, invert, uh, use an inverted funnel and collect the volume of oxygen. So you'll either measure volume of oxygen or you'll count the number of bubbles. Now, what is the expected result and why this is? Um, sorry. So this part here, this part here, this is kind of the hypothesis. What do you think is going to happen and why do you think it is happening? So it's your prediction and your reasoning why. So when light intensity increases, rate of photosynthesis increases because plant is going to have more light to be able to convert uh, carbon dioxide um, to uh, glucose. Okay. So that's the answer. So when light intensity increases, photosynthesis increases as plant will absorb more light, which helps to convert carbon dioxide to glucose. Now, light acts as a catalyst, a catalyst which means that it's going to make the reaction go faster. Let's look at the second experiment now, uh, where the thing that is being tested is the temperature. So now we're keeping light intensity the same, and we're keeping amount of carbon dioxide the same. We're just going to vary the temperature. So how can we vary the temperature? So for this one, you can either use a heater. So uh, you'll have your plant in a setup, and you'll have a heater in the room, so you can heat the temperature of a room at different values so you can have one experiment which is set up at let's say 25 then at 30 then at 35 then at 40 or you could simply take that water and put different temperatures of water so um, you could have water at so if you place ice in the water let's say you place one cube of ice in room temperature water the temperature was going to drop let's say to 15 degrees celsius so you can have water at 15 degree water at 20 at 25 at 30 35 so using water at different temperatures so uh, place the elodia plant in water at different temperature this is going to allow you to vary the temperature a little bit more so then how will you measure the rate of photosynthesis it's going to be the same thing as above so same thing you're again going to measure the volume of oxygen or count the number of bubbles and what is expected 
So when temperature is going to increase, rate of photosynthesis is definitely going to increase. But as we start to reach very high temperatures, so the rate of photosynthesis is going to decrease because in the plants you have enzymes and at very high temperatures, uh, enzymes will start to denature, which means that enzyme is going to um, break down and they are not going to be effective anymore. So at low temperature, enzymes are inactive. As temperature increases, enzymes will become very active. And then above 40 degrees Celsius, so if this is 40, let's say this is 40 degrees Celsius, so we'll have temperature here. So at very low temperature, it's very it has very low activity. At 40, maximum activity, and then above 40, activity starts to decrease. So this is the same trend that is going to be observed in the photosynthesis. So I could say activity here. So, um, yeah, so this is what we will observe. Rate of photosynthesis increases, but at very high temperatures, rate is going to slow down. Okay. Now, in the third experiment, now we're going to change the amount of carbon dioxide. So we'll keep light the same, we'll keep temperature the same. We just want to uh, adjust the amount of carbon dioxide. Now, there's two ways of doing it. If you're using the Elodia plant, uh, so the Elodia plant is the plant that is in water. So in water, you can add... Uh, bicarbonate sodium um, sodium bicarbonate that is going to release carbon dioxide in the water so the more sodium bicarbonate you add the more carbon dioxide is going to be there but you will need to allow the water to cool down and when the water cools down uh, the carbon dioxide still remains in the water so you're just increasing the amount of carbon dioxide but you'll have to allow the water to cool down because as soon as you add the bicarbonate it's going to automatically increase the temperature of the water that's why you have to wait for it to cool down okay so here you're going to use different amounts of uh, sodium bicarbonate to increase the amount of carbon dioxide in the water but um, you will also need to allow the water to cool down because when you add the sodium bicarbonate, temperature of water rises. So then as soon as the water reaches to room temperature, then you place the plant in the water. Because if you already have the plant in the water at the beginning, the plant is already going to start to photosynthesize and we're going to lose information. So this is why we allow water to cool down, then we add the plant. So how we measure rate of photosynthesis is the same way, measure oxygen uh, produced or count number of bubbles. And what is the expected result? So uh, same thing, when amount of carbon dioxide is going to increase, uh, you're going to have more photosynthesis. So as amount of carbon dioxide is going to increase, rate of photosynthesis will increase until it reaches a maximum. So if we see what's going to happen, so we can have a graph like that. So if we have carbon dioxide being increased and if we have uh, activity or we'll say photosynthesis, that's going to be volume of gas collected. So it's going to increase, increase, increase until it reaches a maximum. Okay, so that's the maximum that is reached. It's not going to go beyond that because at this point, it's either temperature or um, temperature or light that is preventing activity from increasing. Okay, so that's the answer for the previous uh, activity uh, of yesterday. Go back to your work, correct everything that you did wrong, and then we're going to continue today.